Matthew writing in Matthew chapter 8, we begin to see the uh, or witness the miraculous power of Jesus Christ uh, over healing and his absolute dominion over death, disease, demons, and the natural forces. Uh, Isaiah foretold much earlier when he wrote in the book of Isaiah that there was coming a Messiah that was going to have dominion. He was going to make the blind people to see. He was going to make the lame to walk and he was going to raise the dead. And Matthew chapter 8 basically is a fulfillment of the prophetic words of, of Isaiah. Hello and welcome to you again wherever you're listening from. Thank you for taking this time off to listen to us as we encourage each other through the precious word of God. May I greet you this morning then on behalf of that name that is above every other name, the name Jesus Christ himself. Matthew then will tell us that when Jesus came to, to the town of Capernaum, he had descended from the mount where he is given his very famous speech, what we would term the Sermon on the Mount, and all the followers that stood in awe of what Jesus had to say. And he comes into Capernaum, and people obviously followed him after his discourse on the mount. After giving the Beatitudes, he comes into Capernaum, and people, needless to say, followed him. The Bible tells us the very first person Jesus encounters or that needed healing was a leper. He was a Jew. He was uh, from the town of Capernaum or, or, or one of the areas around. And he comes to Jesus very sympathetically. Are you willing? He's being a leper and, and the norm in the society, the law in the society. Leprous people could not mingle with those that did not have leprosy. They were outcasts. So he perhaps heard Jesus give this discourse, the Sermon on the Mount. He perhaps heard about uh, or read about the prophetic utterances of Isaiah. And when Jesus came, whether he wanted to test this theory, is this the true Messiah? Understandably, the Jews did not believe Jesus at that stage when he pronounced the, his, his, his kingship and his messiahship. So this leper comes to Jesus and says, are you willing? The Bible will tell us that Jesus looks at him sympathetically. Jesus looked at him compassionately and said, I am willing. And Jesus healed the leper. He was a Jew. And then the Bible would recount the story for us that we want to highlight uh, the healing of the centurion servant uh, as the Bible would aptly describe it. The Bible tells us the centurion was a leader of 100 people. He was stationed in the, in the town of Capernaum around under the authority of the Roman governorship. Uh, Rome had ruled uh, over the Jews at that stage. And this man was a very authoritative figure. He had 100 people under his command. Whatever he told them, they were at his beck and call. And they needed to, to do that. The Romans were there, were, were there to institute the culture of the Roman Empire. They were there to make sure that the, the Jewish or the Jewish nation was subject to all the laws uh, that the Romans had, had, had kind of brought into that society. So this man was there to make sure that he serves the best interests of Rome in Capernaum, in the Jewish society. I want you to understand that he's a Gentile, that he's not a Jew. And yet, Matthew would describe so vividly in chapter 8 and from verse 8 onwards, that this centurion, whether he came to Jesus in person or because of the language barrier, that he sends somebody there that might have understood uh, uh, the language of that stage or, or Jewish friends, and he sends them to address Jesus and says, well, my servant is at home and he's very sick. Won't you come and heal him? Two things that I want to point out today to you. Firstly, he was a Gentile, and yet uh, he believed that Jesus could heal his servant. Whether he was part of the audience that listened to the Sermon on the Mount, whether he had time enough to go and read uh, 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 the prophetic utterances of the prophets of old, I doubt that being a Gentile or perhaps the Jewish friends had led him to believe that this man was the Messiah that the prophets and recounted some of the stories. Uh, I'm trying to understand what would have asked this Gentile to come to this Jew for healing. Perhaps his servant could not get any healing anywhere else. Medically, everybody tried and they failed. And perhaps Jesus was his only hope, be that as it may. The Bible would aptly, aptly describe that when this Gentile, when this non-believing Jew, when this Roman centurion, when this man of authority came to Jesus, he addresses Jesus as Lord. Firstly, in his own power of authority, he has so much of humility that he looks to Jesus and calls him Lord. 
I am beginning to understand perhaps uh, that this man had authoritative figures above him. He had generals and captains that gave him orders that he needed to carry out. So he recognized Jesus as an authoritative figure. Actually, when Luke was relating the story, uh, Jesus uh, makes this utterance when he looks at the Jewish people, the people that he came for, the chosen generation. He says, you call me Lord, Lord, yet you do not do the things I tell you to do. And here was this Gentile coming to Jesus and addresses him as Lord. The humility that he has. Then Jesus has compassion and he says, well, lead me to your house. Note Jesus' gesture that he wanted to go to the very people the Jews condemned. They thought that these Gentiles were, 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 were not from God. They were lower caste and they had, uh, uh, because they did not believe in the Jewish customs, in, in the laws, uh, that they were, 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 were from the devil. And yet Jesus elects to go to this Roman centurion's house. Take me to your house, Jesus says, and I will heal him. I want you to listen to the response of the centurion. He says, Lord, I am not worthy that you can come to my house. I am also a man of authority. When I tell my subjects to go, they go. When I ask them to come, they come. Whatever uh, orders I give to them, they are subjective to those orders and they would perform according to my expectations. Now, Lord, I don't want you to come to my house. In fact, I'm not worthy to have you as a guest at my house. I understand authority and you are a man of authority. All I'm asking you to do, Lord, is just say the word. And I know for sure that my servant would be healed. Just one word from that master's mouth. And this man believed, this Gentile believed, this non-speaking Jew believed, that Jesus will heal his servant. And you know what the response remarkably of Jesus was? He says, never have I seen so much of faith in Israel. How ironic it is that the Jewish people could not muster up so much of faith at this man that being a non-Jew. How ironic it is after the Jewish people would have read all the prophecies about the soon coming Messiah, and yet they did not believe that he was able and capable. I mean, the very first one that came to Jesus and says, are you willing? Oh, well, I am. That's my mandate. I've come that you could have life and have it more abundantly. And Jesus says to the centurion, go and it will be done according to your faith. So wherever you're listening from today, I don't profess to understand or know your circumstances. Whatever your situation might be right now, all I'm encouraging you this morning is to have the faith like the centurion. Have the faith like this Roman soldier. Have the faith like this Roman commander in humility he comes to Jesus and asks for healing. I want you to understand and know, being a Gentile, I don't think he had any of the, of the laws of Moses at his beck and call. He did not have it in his library where he could read the, the prophetic utterances of Isaiah that this Messiah was going to come and do what uh, they said he would do. He had no foreknowledge of that. All he heard and he said, I know you are from God, and please uh, heal my servant. Just send the word. And today I want to encourage you, wherever you're listening from, uh, whatever your state might be, whatever your creed might be, whatever your culture might be, whatever your race might be, whatever your situation might be, whatever your background might be, whatever your status might be, all I'm here to tell you this morning, just one word, just one word from Jesus, uh, and he can set you free. Just one word from Jesus and he can deliver you. Just one word from Jesus and he can heal you. Just one word from Jesus and he can fulfill your heart's desire today. All you need to do is have faith uh, like that centurion. Today I specifically want to address you that have a physical need from Jesus. Perhaps you're sick in body. And I'd like 
if you permit me to pray for you wherever you might be listening from. Father, today we commit everyone that needs a physical touch from you today, Lord. Father, we're asking that you would touch them from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. Father, we say today, Lord, that, we, that that body will line up with the word of God right now. We come against every pain in that body. We come against every sickness in that body. We come against every disease in that body. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we command every cell, every tissue, every bone, every marrow, every ligament, every organ to line up with the word of God. And Father, right now, just like that centurion, Father, we're asking you to go through the, the, the sound of this voice, Lord. Go through this medium right now and that you would touch everyone that can have the faith to believe that, that you are willing to heal them right now and Father ask that you would heal that you would touch and that you would set free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Amen and Amen perhaps this morning you don't know who Jesus is sin has got a hold of you and today one word from Jesus and he can break the shackles of the hold of sin over your life. You don't know who Jesus is. Jesus said, I have come that you could have life and have it more abundantly. I am going to prepare a place for you that where I am, that there you would be also. And there is only one way to get to where Jesus is. And Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And, and the assurance that he gives to you today, if you believe in me, if you confess me as your Lord, you would be with me in paradise. Today, if that's, you, if that's you, we'd like to pray for you. Just a simple prayer. Perhaps you could muster up the courage and the faith to repeat this prayer after me. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me. I recognize that I am a sinner, that I have faulted and failed. And today, I'm asking you to forgive me, cleanse me, and I know that you're coming back for me. Father, won't you make me your child? In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We thank you for this opportunity to address you. We trust that this message would bring healing to your body, comfort to your souls, and joy to your hearts. God bless you wherever you're listening from.